you think we need to find dirt? Like well, a whole bunch of mud. There, there will be people in the comments. You're already watching, wondering why mud. on earth we're not on dirt. I'll tell you why we're not on dirt. Because the one we were sent is white with white interior. I'm scared to climb into it in blue jeans, <laughs> let alone drive it on dirt. If you were ever going to off-road this, you would never, ever, ever get this spec. Ever. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. ever. It's white exterior, white interior leather. <laughs> it's terrible. It's terrible. On oh, the world's premier off-roader in white. Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. Road trips, comparisons, test drives, and podcasts. This is Everyday Driver. This is the 2023 Land Rover Defender 130. The 130. This stretch the big guy. version. Mm -hmm. This has history. Mm -hmm. Way Lots. back in the day, Defenders were designated 90 and 110 because of the length of their wheelbases. Easy, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So here is this 130, the new one, because we needed seven or I guess eight passengers. We needed, we needed seven for sure. Yeah. Lots of people yeah. to carry because that's what people buy, right? Uh, that's what this we hear. That's what yes. we buy. That's what we buy. Seven seaters. So they call it the 130, even though the wheelbase is 119 inches. Mm -hmm. It's the same wheelbase as the 110 because they're not about to re-engineer the chassis. To make a seven-seater, yes. To make the seven-seater, so they just extended the rear cargo area, which does give it a lot more cargo space. They but extended it by a foot. Uh, of just It's yeah. just a foot of extra sheet metal out back. Yeah, it's like almost 14 inches or 13 and yeah, change, it, but that doesn't add to the 110. That's that's it, like 127. It, it, but that just doesn't but roll it's off the, the wheelbase. Tone. True, but the other issue is the fact that this design actually got a lot of accolades when it first came out in 90, which I think it looks amazing. It looks Great. Two door 90. Yes. And in 110, you add this extra foot plus to the back and it just looks wrong. So you took a design that actually looked really, really good and now it looks imbalanced. Yeah. And your departure angle is destroyed because you've got this long tail sticking out. Yeah. All in the quest of trying to have seven seats. And after all of that, they're passable as back seats. They're not good, they're passable. Like, still gonna need to be kids. You can't put adults back there. There'll be enough headroom. There is enough headroom, but there's not nearly enough leg and foot room yes. for an actual usable back row. Totally. That's the whole point of making this is have a good third row. You would think. If you're gonna do it, yes. why not call it like the 150 and it's like this <laughs> weird <laughs> At long four feet tail. off the back. It looks like a guppy now. The back seats are great. The back seats are awesome. We didn't we change just, the wheelbase. It just it wheelies down the road. Rear departure angle is terrible. It's very bad. Although Land Rover does claim still like just over 28 degrees of departure angle, which is it's still, still decent, yeah. but you should have amazing back seats. If you're going to do this and go this far and rename it with a 130. But 90 to 110 is 20, so we go from 110 up to the next model, we just added 20, so it's 130. Maybe that's it. It's just, okay. let's add 20. Well, this is powered by a, an almost 400 horsepower yes. Ingenium Inline 6 twin charged yes and it's the mild hybrid so it's got that 48 volt starter generator which means upon startup the engine just pops to life yep. and it harnesses some energy it recaptures some energy but it also gives you that nice power boost when you need it it has the e supercharger For, as they refer to it so it's turboed and supercharged even though the supercharger relates to the hybrid system which you don't plug in because it's not a plug-in hybrid it's a mild hybrid but it does result in actually a lot of power this is nearly yeah. a 6,000 pound truck it's like 58 100 it's to 59, depending you upon how you it. spec it. But it actually does a lot with that power. 395 horsepower, 406 yeah. pounds of to torque, I think. It gets a lot of power out of that, what seems like a small engine. Three liter engine does yeah, not sound like it looks tiny under the this, hood. It's, but it's kind it of actually, lonely under the, there. The, the power is excellent. I will definitely give it that. Yeah. If you're watching because you want a Defender or any Range Rover, you need Autotempest.com to search all the car markets and even research dealers. Auto Tempest helps you search nationwide across all the used car sites, including Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. Plus, you can get email alerts so you never miss a listing. We use it to research for our podcast, to search for crazy road trip cars, and just because we like to dream. And Auto Tempest can even help with new cars, pricing out the options and getting local dealer quotes. So if you're looking for a Defender of any wheelbase length, Autotempest.com can get you the help you need. Auto Tempest. All the cars. One search. So I actually did a, a tiny bit of off-roading this. Did you? Okay. It's not really off-roading. It was just dirt. Oh, okay. It was a construction With the area white one? I know. Sorry. Sorry, go on. Go on, it, go on. It's crazy. It was a, a bit of rough and tumble. Yeah. And so I decided to steer this onto some dirt. Okay. And some rocks and some undulating mm. off-road surfaces. <laughs> Which is what it's known for. 
Land Rover has built its name as being the premier off-road vehicle for mm-hmm. decades. Totally. This is the one you totally. want to be in when you're in the jungles of somewhere <laughs> and you're deep in the heart of somewhere. Jungles of downtown Atlanta. Sure. The jungles of Beverly Hills. <laughs> that too. Yeah. Uh-huh. Instantly, this felt like it was home. Mm. I get it. The mm-hmm. air suspension, the weight, the articulation, when you put this at its highest setting, suddenly it all makes sense. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes, true. yes. Okay. Right. It felt natural. Mm-hmm. I was not doing rock crawling. I was not doing severe off-roading. But still, there there were some good dips and valleys. Okay. And it felt immediately at home. The problem is, this will never be taken off-road. <laughs> Certainly not in this spec. Not in this white. <laughs> Light oyster leather? I no. don't think so. No, no. It literally, ha- it has it has blue jean marks on your driver's seat. It does. Seat. It does. Yeah. But that's not what these are going to be used for, especially in the seven-seater configuration. Mm. I cannot imagine... Fully off-roading, fully packed, and you are doing the highest We're going over air suspension. And you, maybe, maybe. <laughs> I but don't I think don't so. think that's most buyers. I agree, yeah. Because at 92000 almost $93,000, this is the SUV to be seen in. This is a mm, statement. Okay. Oh, you own, you own a Range Rover. You own a Land Rover. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yep. Yeah. And then the designers spec this first edition in Fuji White. And then the lower rockers are satin silver. That skid plate up there is called noble chrome. First of all, you don't noble chrome any skid anything. That's going to get scraped instantly. That's not what you spec a premier off-road vehicle Mm, with mm. satin silver paint that's fragile and light and could get easily scratched. No, that makes zero sense. Unless you know to what you're saying, this isn't actually going to be off-roaded. It won't be. And then it's fine. But it felt so natural on the lightest of easiest sure, off-road. Sure, sure. It just felt yeah, yeah. like it came to life. Yeah, like, yeah. Now I get it. Of course, if I'm going to buy one, I'm going to live on a ranch. You don't want anything near this luxury inside. It's so weird that it's almost dishonest. That skid plate, it looks like diamond plate. It should mm-hmm. be aluminum, uh-huh. not silver painted plastic. I want to mount something and drill <laughs> holes and well, it's just, mount a tire or a carcass yeah. of something on the hood. It looks like you're supposed to put something heavy on it, but it's plastic. And then I get around to the grab handles. These, right here behind me. Yeah, okay. They look like dock cleats. They look like I should wrap twine or dental floss or something around it. That, no, they're just creaky plastic. The interior shifter, the two halves of the shifter, creak when I grab it. This is where I touch this expensive vehicle, and it's cheap. It, it sounds and feels cheap. Terrible right, plastic. Right. This should be billet. This should be Inconel, <laughs> made with a 20-axis mill. That feel, feel, it. feel like immovable steel. I, can't I get your point. I'm yeah. gripping this shift nut. No, it's just cheap plastic. The styling is very bold, as you said. This mm-hmm. is very interesting. It's unique. It's very stylish, but it's very line and radius kind of style. Yeah, it's, very it's cool looking. Traditional. It's very cool it looks looking. very expensive. It's it, it's very boss. The way the lines terminate at the end, where the the taillights are, very carefully done because they added 13, almost 14 inches of vehicle on yeah, the back. Yeah. We've overdesigned everything else to be just so line and radius. And then they have this mushy shape. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I love the interior. That tray for all the interior your is stuff. actually really. It, it, this has great yes. usability, great cubbies, great things to hang on to. Land Rover has partnered with a British tech company called What Three Words. The nav system doesn't need a satellite link to find any place on the planet. This tech company has divided the globe into 57 trillion squares that are three meters by three meters. They have assigned every single one of those squares three words. So you can find any wow. three meter square location on the planet with three words. You can do this with any place on the planet and it will navigate you to that location. Fascinating. This is a uh, brand showcase for most of the people that drive it. There's a lot of good stuff and a lot of stuff that feels like a misstep in one big vehicle at $92,000. It does feel like they thought about stuff's going to get thrown around in here, but then you look at the spec and you go, no, 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 we're going to keep it as nice as we possibly can. Don't put anything anywhere. I'm muddy. I can't climb in here. No, you couldn't. Don't get out and get back in. What are you, insane? All right. right. Speaking of that, I'm going to get out and back in. Yeah. I'm six foot three. Yeah. I'm tall. I'm a bit of a tree, but I'm not an NBA player. Sure, I sure. do have a longer torso than you. Yes. So we fit in cars a little bit differently. I like to sit kind of low. Even in an SUV, I like to sit kind of low. This seat doesn't go nearly low enough for me. 
Yeah. But okay, I'm, I, I, that's happened in other cars. Not a big deal. Yeah. However, I can't get the mirror to tilt high enough. As high as the driver's mirror will go, I am still looking mostly at the road behind the car and. Just on the top of the mirror, I'm seeing cars coming up. I can't raise the mirror anymore for more visibility. This is a $92,000 vehicle that prides itself on going anywhere, and I can't see well enough out of the side mirror. Secondarily... Objects in the mirror are lower than they appear. Th clearly, they are. <laughs> Secondarily, these, this is a bad seat. Like, yes. I have driven this for five minutes and found it uncomfortable. I've driven it for well over an hour and found it uncomfortable. Again, this is a very expensive car. Yes. The seat feels too narrow, and it has almost no thigh bolstering. So your legs like roll out to the it's edges against the body panels. flat. And because yes. it has such a large center console, you feel kind of confined. I mean, it's not as bad as like the Hummer H1, but it's starting to head that way, which is a problem with heavy-duty off-roading. Is you have all this running gear, you run out of space. But my legs are against the the, the door and the center console at all times because that's what stops them rolling. It's not the seat. <laughs> that is fall out of this That car. is disappointing. Yeah. For a car that is this expensive and is going to be used mostly as a luxury vehicle, these seats should be like, oh, these are awesome. They should be amazing, and they're not. And they're not. And that is a big, big surprise to me yes. in this. And unfortunately, I don't think that is a problem that is limited to the 130. Mm -hmm. That's a disappointment. Now, you may fit fine in the seats. You may be smaller than me. You may All your visibility might be okay. But that was a big disappointment for me in climbing in this. And as I drive it more, I keep being disappointed by it. I'm going to run away with my 400 horsepower. Turbocharged and supercharged. Have some hydrocarbons. You know it. Love it. This now, thing moves. It really moves. This thing's the actually power kind of is quick. excellent. And if you're going in a Shocking. straight line and you get up to speed, he did not expect me to leave him, by the no, way. No, he did not. If you get up to speed <laughs> and you're going in a straight line, this has like S-Class kind of ride. It just doesn't bother you with the world outside. Right. The problem comes because of all of that all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, heavy-duty running gear for off-roading. The slightest corner, and it has huge spongy body roll. Now, straight line on a freeway, you will never notice. That's true. Going at high speed for a family vacation, I'm going down the interstate, you're going to feel like this is your castle. Yeah. You're up high, you've got good visibility, it has just this cruising feel, and it soaks up the bumps, and that's wonderful. Corners are not good corner suddenly this is a huge off-roader with spongy yeah. suspension and it instantly reveals itself to be that and if you are buying it to be off-road absolutely fine you did it right yes but i don't think you are i don't think this is being bought for that i don't I even agree. think most 90s or 110s are being bought for that i think they're being bought because they look super cool and they do they look really cool yes and they have that land rover history i think the buyer of this is the same kind of buyer that buys an exotic supercar as their daily in an urban area. I don't care to actually use it for its capabilities. I care to have the badge and the prestige of driving it in a way it was never intended for. That is this. If you drive this, you should take it off-road, but in this spec, you're never taking it off-road. I struggle with this as a daily in a big, big way, but I think its number one purpose for most people will be as a daily but it doesn't get good enough gas mileage to be a decent daily. If you're gonna daily this thing, there's other SUVs costing about this price that get better gas mileage. Well, but you've just walked into my other big thought. I started to think about competition for this, and I think there's a lot. Now, there isn't anything that has the Land Rover reputation and badge, and that is a big thing. And this capability may, is awesome. You may just buy it for yes. that Land Rover reputation and what you know it can fair, do off fair. road. You, you, you may do that, and so everything I say next might be irrelevant. There are three major competitors I can think to this. I'd like a prestigious luxury badge that feels great to drive as a daily, and I need seven seats. Well, you buy the Mercedes GLS. Yeah. It's every bit as powerful as this. You can get it for $95,000. It is the better vehicle that handles better on any normal road, has much better seats and a better interior. <laughs> about to roll yeah, out of my seat. There. I, I'm bracing well, myself. You would think that even off-roading, mm -hmm. you still need some you support because of the nature of what you're doing. You're going to be all over the place. Yes. So where are the this bolsters? Has a lot it's of body. terrible. It has a lot of body. All right, keep going. If you decide, okay, but what I need is I need a seven-seater that I can haul stuff. Because this has good, this has like over 8,000 pounds of towing capacity. It's like 8,200 pounds I want to be able to yeah. tow stuff, I want to yeah. be able to take stuff. I need it to be like the family, like do stuff vehicle. 
Well, you buy a loaded Chevy Suburban. You have more space, more towing Suburbans, capacity, yes. a tons, tons more room to put everything in and more towing. You buy that. You say, no, no, I want a three-row family off-roader. You buy a Rubicon Jeep Wrangler Unlimited because that's something you're never going to think twice about. Dinging, scratching, wrecking, making it dirty. And, and it will go off-road. And it's ready to go anywhere you yeah. want to go off-road. It's not good on-road. It's not this good on-road. No. But if you're off-roading, that's your purpose. So I am left with this that doesn't actually excel at any of those three focuses, but it does have that name and it does have that reputation. And I love how it drives in a straight line in spite of the fact I'm not comfortable in the seat. So I, I find myself very torn by this, ultimately not liking it very much because yeah. I wish it would pick a lane. It's one of those vehicles you get mid-corner and you go, I should have gone slower. I should, I should be going slower. And you can't brake now. So I was looking for that switch to open the hatch, mm -hmm. thinking I'm in a $93,000 SUV, I want to open the back, let's have a look and see what the cargo space is like. And I was looking up here, I was okay. looking around, yeah, like, yeah. where's the hatch switch? And I was like, oh, you dummy, this is a Range Rover. It opens like a giant door like this. So went back there, okay, no power door. No power door for a $93,000 truck, okay. Fair, yeah, yeah. Open it up. The rear seats, the third row, they don't fold flat. The second row doesn't either. You've got kind of a three stair step thing. It goes base, storage, third row, second row. It stair steps up. It's a decent amount of space, yes. but a Suburban is flat. Yep. Yep. Europe needs Suburbans. They're great. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For, that's what you need. The seats back there, they're not power seats. For $93,000, nothing is power. And that tailgate is also very heavy with the 22-inch full-size spare on it. Yep. It's a really heavy door. It is. You're right. I can manage, but what about your average person? Like, can't close the door very well. It should be a power tailgate. Little things that don't add up to the price, mm. and therefore you're buying it for the badge. But you should buy this and go off-roading, and it, you will laugh at everyone. It's superior. It's superb. It it's does great excellent. stuff off-road. But that's not why people will buy this, especially with the third row. Not the, not the 130. And not yeah. in white. And not in white. Certainly not with white in here. Even God. if you did white exterior, and you're going to try to power, power hose off all of the all of the Fine, muck, but this interior needs to be any color but white. I mean, the fact that it's offered, and the fact that the first edition was specced this way by the design team. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say off-road. No. It says Beverly Hills. It's absolutely. So I think that's the person that's going to be buying this. You can do 35 inches worth of water wading in this, which is very impressive. It's impressive. But here's my concern. You have a white interior. What happens if you hit 36 inches? <laughs> you will never, ever recover what's going on in this interior. You get in this with that, your wellies I was, on. I was just under three feet. I hit three feet, and the white interior is forever ruined. I want to like this more. There's stuff too. in here that's going on that's really great. Too. There's underpinnings and history that are awesome. But... To be here is not the experience that it should be unless you are a fan of the brand or you love the Defender and thank God now it's got a third row. Yeah. But for all of the reasons I already stated, I think there are better vehicles depending upon your focus.